Hello and welcome to The Natural Spinner. I will be showing you how I tie my finished skeins of yarn, determine wraps per inch, and measure the yardage of the skein. As you can see, I have put the yarn on my skein winder ready to tie off. This is the second time it's been on the skein winder. When the yarn, when I finished the skein, when I finished my plying, this is a two ply, I, there's a bobbin thing on the bottom of the skein winder and I skeined it up and I soaked it in my wash water to set the twist. I used just a little bit of eucalyptus wash in it that doesn't require any actual rinsing. Works really well, has a nice smell to it. But I did that, I set the twist, I let it hang to dry, and now I've re-skeined it. And I do that for a couple of reasons. First of all, when you handle the skein after it's finished, drying. During the soaking process you squeeze it, you get the water in it, it dries. Some of the strands can be pulled a little and get uneven. And also the skein can change. The yarn itself can change after it's had the twist set in it. It can bloom a little, which means it kind of fluffs up and the yarn it can contract even a little bit more like when you wash your, your locks, your fleece locks. They contract a bit depending on the breed and, and whatnot. But, uh, so there's a couple of reasons. The yarn can change and it'll make a neater skein if it's re-skeined after the twist has been set and your yarn is dry. So, here's my yarn on the skein winder, ready to tie off. And I always aim for a really neat tie off, regardless of whether I'm keeping it for my own use, or whether I'm going to sell it, or it could end up as a gift for someone, but I always want it to be neat and tidy. And I always self-tie. I always use the yarn that the skein is is of to tie it off. And you see there's some extra hanging over. Once you're finished putting the yarn on the skein, whether it's a skein winder or a nitty knotty or you're using a book or the back of a chair, it's all kind of it all works the same way. Um, you'll tie it off the same way. So here's the top, all right? This was where I counted one, two and kept on going in. This one went around 170 times to here. So there's kind of enough left over to keep as a sample, to use for self-tying, and to also use to put on the wraps per inch gauge that I have, that I'll show you as well. Um, so I, but if you want more, you just, you know, just back it off and take off if you don't quite have enough extra and you want more. And you just back it up to your point and then you have plenty. So that actually puts it down to 169 for this particular skein. And then I have plenty of leftover to keep for doing whatever with. I like to keep samples of everything. It gets a tag and put in a little Ziploc baggie. Um, even if the yarn is sold or given away or used, I'll always keep a small sample. It, it just helps. I like to have samples of everything and a record of what I've spun and so, to start the tying, I usually back up to the section, there's a four section on this two yard, it's set on the two yard uh, size on this skein winder. I'll back up to the section here, but it doesn't matter if you do it. If you start on this side, you just have to pull the yarn out from underneath the top. That's why I start here. This was where it started here. Let's see if I can get you a better view. So it started here, and here's the piece that came, the last piece of yarn that came around. So what I'll do is I will tie it. Let's see if I can make this a little bit better for you so you can see what I'm doing here. Let's see if I can do this a little better for you. Okay. Okay. Maybe that's better. Okay, so I'm tying. Taking the two strands, I usually wrap it twice. I don't pull it tight. You don't ever want to pull really tight because that'll make it uneven to the rest of the, the yarn just until it's 
not sagging anywhere. And I will tie a knot. Sometimes this can be a little tricky, but I usually just tie a nice knot. There we go. Now, I do it like, like most people do. You just do a figure eight. So you take the, the yarn on the skein liner, and you kind of split it in half. Now I'm taking the I haven't cut anything yet, so I'm taking the short end, running it through, wrapping it around, through again, and out this side. Now you'll see my knot is here. My yarn that's been wound through is here. I even it up. Throw on the scissors and cut. Okay. There's all my extra, all my extra yarn that I'm going to be using to tie off the rest. So once I, once I'm at this point, I usually kind of twist it, twist, because I'm not going to do a um, what do they call it? A square knot? I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to turn it, put it through like that. And you can see I didn't pull this tight. The, the yarn on the skein here is still, it's, I can open it a little bit. I didn't pull it really tight so that it's pinched tight. I don't want to do that. It will make a mark in the yarn. Each strand that comes out of that section would have a little, like a dent in it, sort of, if you did that. Um, so it's kind of loose. And if you're, if you're tying off a skein to dye it before you dye, let's say this was something you were going to dye, you definitely would not want to tie it tight or else the dye wouldn't get into those sections. So I've tied my first section and then I usually just even it and cut off a tiny little piece. And then I turn to the next section and I do the same thing. Now I don't usually cut the yarn until I've pulled it through so I know how much. Again, you just pull the section in half. Got your yarn. Run it through. Back through. even it out. You know, you don't want to waste it, so there's your short end, your long end, make them even, I tie them, I mean I cut it, and then I tie, twist, twist a little. I just think this turns out a little bit neater, and I'm all about neatness. I like tidy, neat, nice looking. If you're going to sell your skein or enter in a competition or something. Presentation is important and this is very neat. It's very tidy. It's very very professional looking. Alright, my third section. Find my end of yarn. Again. Through. Figure eight through. And you can see I'm aiming for the center of each one of the sections on the skein winder. Cut. Twist a little. If you, twisting it a little just makes it easier when you, when you try to get it back around through the hole. You can certainly tie a double knot if that's your preference. I do it this way because this is my preference. And the ends usually don't come out perfectly even, so I always just trim them. Again, just for preference, it's just my preference. It makes a very neat presentation when you do it this way. Last section. And through, even it out a little bit, tie, cut, okay, twist, 
just a little bit. It just holds together if you add a little twist to it before you do it. And there's that one's pretty even, but I don't want it quite so long. So I will snip a little off. Okay. Now you've got your skein tied off. So it's ready to come off the skein winder now. Okay. Here's my extra yarn. I'm going to use some of this to show you show you about the wraps per inch here in a minute. So your skein is on the skein winder or your nitty knotty or whatever you have used to wind it. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is figure out the yardage. But you'll see, now I didn't, this was done from a swift, not the uh, bobbin like the first time, but this, because it was already in a skein, I put it on a swift, skeined it on here, and it, it wasn't pulled, but no matter what you do, when you skein yarn, it will be stretched a little bit. Even if you have tried really hard and you, you don't intentionally pull on it, it will get stretched some no matter what you do. Now if you watch as I take it off, here's the smooth one, the rest of these have the knobs on them to keep the yarn from falling off. This is the one that you take it off first. Now if you watch, watch how it, now that's its natural, see how it has shrunk down? That's without pulling on it. So that is how much stretch has been put into this supposed to be a two yard circumference, but it's obviously not going to end up being two yard circumference. So I can't base my yardage on two yards times the 169 turns that it made. So I'll show you how I figure it. So anyway, I'm going to take this off carefully. Off. Tends to want to stick a little bit. It can be a little tricky. And there's my skein of yarn. Now, I'm going to move this out of the way. We're going to go over to the table here. Let's move over to the table a little bit here. So I can show you how I do my yarn. Measure the yarn. Forgive me for a second. I don't have a camera crew, so I have to do it all myself. Camera crew and presenter. Okay. See if we can get that down just a little more to show you. Okay. Well, keep slipping. There, that's better. Alright. These are my wraps for each step. Now I have my measuring tape sitting on the table. Now this is the skein as it came off the skein winder. It has, it was stretched on the skein winder a little bit, even though I didn't try to. It's just the way it, it happens. So what I'm going to do is put it up on the, the um. Let's try a little bit better. Hmm. Here's the 36 way down here, which is one yard. So I'm going to, I'm going to figure this by one yard. All right. I'm going to line it up at the end of my measuring tape and see how far down it gets. It gets to about 32 inches. All right. And what I do is, since this is a circle, and it's, so it's doubled, so I'll take the 32, my handy dandy cell phone calculator. This is my digital Swiss Army knife thing. Uh, let's see. So. We'll take 32 times 2, because that will give us our t 
total circumference all the way around. That's 64 inches. And then I'm going to multiply that times the number of times it went around, which was 169 after I, it was originally 170, but I backed it up to 169 to have some extra yarn here. And that will give me 10,816. Now to get individual yards, I will take that, divide it by 36, which will give me three about 300 yards. Now if I had based it on the 170 turns that it made on the skein winder times the two yards that were on there, it would have ended up being a lot more yardage, which would have been incorrect. And you would be, if you did that, and then put it on your tag, and you go to look for a yarn for a project, and you find this and think, oh great, I have so-and-so yards, you would be in, a in for a shock when you got to the end, and oh, you were short by a bunch of yards. So this is the best way I've found for figuring your yardage on your hand spun skeins of yarn. Um, because no matter what you do, you're always going to get some stretch. At least I've always found. Some things will stretch more, some will stretch less. I spin worsted, so in, on average a worsted yarn will have less spring to it anyway. Um, but some has a surprising amount no matter what. So. Again, just to go over one more time, when the skein comes off, it's not stretched. This is just its natural you know, length sitting here. I'll measure it on my measuring tape, 32, multiply it times 2 so I get the full circle circumference here of the yarn. Measure, multiply that times the 169, which was the number of times around and then divide it by 36, which is one yard. That gives me 300 total yards. So that should be fairly accurate for figuring your yardage of your skein. Now, for the wraps per inch part, this is how I do it. And I've seen it done many different ways. I do have an Ashford, an Ashford little wraps per inch gauge. There are many different companies that make gauges. People make handmade ones. There's some really nice ones. I have some ideas to make my own someday. Right, but what I do, here's my yarn. I have a little piece of a dowel and I've got two inches marked on here. What I'm going to do is take a tiny piece of tape side and I'm going to tape the end I'm going to tape it if I can get it to sit straight on a stick here I'm going to line it up with one of the lines on the end so it's lined up so we're starting at one of the lines and all I'll do is hold my finger I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to wrap it like this around and around and I'll show you why I don't do that. And You may have seen this somewhere else. Here's a strip of something I got off. I don't even know what it is but it's flat and you'll see what happens. If I take and hold this and wrap it, you see what happens? It starts to twist because I'm holding it. And look at the twist that's in there. It's not flat anymore. It's getting twist in it. So if you hold your yarn and wrap it around in the same manner, your wraps per inch may be quite a bit off as you twist it, as it twists as you wrap it in that way. Because it's um, changing the twist of the yarn. So what I do is I tape, tape the end to it, put my finger sort of to guide it. I'm not pushing it, I'm just guiding it. And then I start going around. And every time I get to the where it's been taped, I can count one. So I do, let's see where you can see this. I go one, 
two, three. And if you get really good at it, sometimes I'll hold, I'll pinch it sort of down here a little bit and hold my finger there because I'm just guiding it. I'm not forcing it, I'm not packing it. I'm just keeping it in place. So that's three and then four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, you want to make sure it doesn't kind of go over itself because it will sometimes. I lost track. <laughs> I do sometimes lose track. So, anyways, it takes a little practice to sort of hold it in the right way, but if you do it enough, you get better at it. So, we're starting again here. We're doing one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. So it's about seventeen. If you want a more accurate measurement, you can go all the way to the two inch mark and divided by two and for hand spun yarn it's always a good idea to do a couple different sections actually um, I'll take this off and I'll go to the other end and I'll do it again because you may end up getting a different reading different wraps per inch number because it's hand spun and nothing hand spun is absolutely perfect. Machine spun may not be absolutely perfect, but it's so consistent that, you know, it looks perfect for the most part. So anyway, that is how I do my wraps per inch. That's how I measure my skeins and how I tie them off very neatly. Um, this was aimed mostly for the beginner someone who hasn't been doing it very long and may have wanted to know gee how do they tie those skeins off so neatly and how do you do this and how do you do that so hopefully what I've done will help someone and they'll go oh that's how okay my way is not the only way people do things many different ways to get the same result but this is the way I do it and it seems to have worked for me and my yardage calculating seems to work out really well because um, you definitely don't want to figure your yardage on stretched yarn because it won't be correct when you're using it for a knitted or woven project. It'll, it'll you'll come up short if you if you figure it with just the turns on the skein winder or the knitty knotty um, times whatever it's a one or two yard circumference. So do it this way. You'll get more the most correct, the most accurate yardage for your skein and. Using this little stick is just one way to do a wraps per inch. And um, I hope that I've shared something of interest. And um, thanks so much for watching.